For the longest time, code quality in Python has been an interesting question to answer. There have been plenty of tools around, you know, Flakate is a particularly popular one. I've never really used Flakate, I tend to use the individual tools more. Um, so, you know, the black, I saw Bandit separately. Um, you know, there's Pylint as well. There's all these choices and they all have their own issues from, you know, speed to convenience to whatever. Well, there is a new tool that's been around for a little while um, called Rough, and it's been written in Rust for all those Rustations out there, and it is blisteringly fast. It is very easy to use. It is insanely quick. My work code base is 215,000 lines long and Rough linted the entire thing in less than a second. It really is that fast. Um, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do uh, a basic setup of it, how to install it, how to get the PyProject.tumble working. And I'm also gonna be showing you in the spirit of you know videos I tend to do on this channel, showing you a few um, codes kind of in action. You know, it works the same way as Flakate when it comes with codes. For those of you that haven't worked with Flakate before, I will go more into detail about that. But I'll probably also make a separate video kind of going through all the different codes as well. Um, but I'm going to be covering some more of the obscure ones, you know, there's the ones that everyone that's used Flakeout or Rough before kind of knows about, but I'm going to be uh, going over some of the more useful obscure ones. So to actually install Rough, all you need to do is run, when my terminal decides to load up, pip install Rough. Just like that, and it will install, I don't think it has any dependencies, no it doesn't. Uh, and it's 0.0.252 at time of recording, so it's by no means stable, uh, you know, they're adding a lot of stuff, um, you know, stuff keeps getting added and, you know, a few things will change here and there. Generally speaking, I think it is relatively stable, it's mainly bug fixes that tend to break anything, if anything, at all. Once that's installed, we can start using it immediately, so I'm going to create a new file, just called test.py and import uh, random. And then I'm gonna run uh, rough on this because it will flag up an error. You see, I have the visual code extension installed. Let me actually show you that real quick while I'm here. Uh, so there's this VS code extension by Charlie Marsh. Uh, this is the one you want. Um, and this essentially just, you know, loads rough into VS code. Really nice, all you have to do is install it and it's there already. Uh, it uses the pyproject.toml um, in your directory, but we'll be talking about those in a bit. Um, I was talking about that because it's saying, you know, it's giving us the yellow underline. If we scroll to the bottom here, it's a random import but unused rough F401. And if we do rough check, which is the command we use to check, dot, um, it will, you know, find this error, F401, random imported but unused. Uh, one really nice thing about uh, rough is that you can have potentially fixable options. And I've added this line just to kind of show this off a little bit better. Um, but if you were to run rough check dot with uh, double dash fix, uh, the things that it can fix, it can't fix everything, but the things that it can fix will be fixed. So as you can see, the, the, um, the import has been removed completely. It's no longer a problem which is actually a really nice thing to have because I don't think Flake 8 really has any of that capability and I'm pretty sure Pilot doesn't either. Um, one thing I'm less sure about with it is that, you know, you can do show fixes to actually show what it's going to do, but it doesn't seem to do it all the time. I'm not sure if it's just the specific plugins or whether it's rough itself. Um, but, you know, uh, the double dash fix kind of just does its own stuff automatically. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of that, but maybe I'll get used to it as time goes on. I don't know. So now we've gone over, you know, the bare basics of the installing and usage of Rough, we can talk about configuration. So Rough is very configurable as you would expect it to be. It does have a default configuration and that default configuration looks, oh, I've messed that up massively, but it looks something like this. Um, ignore the fact that I can't use Mac OS to save my life. Um, so it selects your E and F code automatically. So what that means is that every code that starts with that will be selected. So if you have, you know, your F, I think this one was F40 something, F401. Um, you know, you could have F4 in that as well, and it starts with F4. Uh, but if you were to put F4 in here, for example, we would only select ones that start with F4. If you were to put F5, you know, this error wouldn't be flagged, which is how those codes work. For those of you that have never used Flake 8 before, um, you have your fixable things that basically just tries to fix everything it can. It has your excludes, it has your, you know, certain things uh, to make rough more usable. However, we can define our own uh, setting once I actually figure out how on earth to separate these two windows. 
So all you need to do um, to do that is create a pyproject.toml file, and you can have your tool.ruff in here. So everything under this header will be read by Ruff um, as a configuration option. So some that you might particularly want to use are extend uh, select, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, but essentially that extends the default selections. So Ruff selects E and F uh, by default. If you want to use more, it's recommended that you use extend select rather than just select as if you select, you'll have to specify E and F manually unless you don't want them, in which case you're probably better off. I don't know. Um, you then have your ignore, which you know works very much the same way. So you know if we wanted to ignore this F401 error that we had before, then we can put that in here and we would ignore just that error. As I was saying before, if you put you know F4 in here, then it would now ignore all F400 to F499 errors. Uh, so that's how that works. I'm going to get rid of that for now because I don't want that to happen in our demos. Uh, I'm also going to turn show fixes equal true. Uh, again, this is the thing that doesn't work 100% at the moment, but it is nice to kind of see what it's going to fix when it can give you it. And you also have a target version. So this isn't the version of Python that you're using currently. Um, by default, this uses Python 3.10, but this is basically if you need to create code compatible with earlier versions of Python, you can you know, specify a different version here. So for example, my project that I've used this for originally needs to support Python 3.7, so I can put Python 37 in there. Um, and this doesn't affect much. This only affects, I believe, a single code. Uh, but it is useful to have, you know, just in case I'm wrong and it actually affects more than that, I'm not 100% sure. For specific tools, if they have options, you can say do tool.rough.isor, I think would be, and you can have your own settings here. I don't have any examples of them at the moment. Uh, but the one thing I did want to show you was particular codes. Now, I'm only going to show you three. I have a setup that has a lot of codes enabled. Um, by default, but I'm going to show you some obscure ones that you may not have heard of even in Flake 8 that I think are actually really, really useful. And that is C4, um, TCH, and SIM. Uh, and for those of you that is bugging, I'm going to make this alphabetical because that bugs me too. Uh, so C4 is comprehensions. So basically this will look um, through your code and tell you if you can make your comprehensions any better. Sim is code simplification, so it will tell you if you can simplify your code. And TCH is kind of a type checking thing. Um, so if there's anything particularly you could do better with type checking, it will tell you that. I'm going to show you one example of one code from each um, in our test.py file. So if I were to say, for the C4, if I were to say create a set from a generator, um, so if we do, actually, we don't need that, do we, at all? Uh, so i for i in range 10, it will now flag that up and it will give us an error C401, unnecessary generator, rewrite a set comprehension. So that's told me, oh, I can rewrite it like this. And this is giving me a different error. Unnecessary set comprehension, rewrite using set. Okay, this is giving us something where we don't need a comprehension in this case. Um, but, you know, it can tell you whether or not you can simplify your comprehensions or, as I say, uh, if you don't need your comprehensions at all, there are plenty of codes for that. And it's actually really nice because comprehensions can be kind of awkward and something to help you on those paths is actually really useful. Uh, the code simplification, uh, the one example I know from that looks for nested if blocks that don't need to be nested if blocks. Um, to say if we had, you know, n equals 5... Uh, and an x equals 3. If we were to do if, oh, if n is greater than 5, and then if you were to put in here, if uh, x is less than 4, uh, print where golden, we'll get an error. Uh, specifically sim102 saying use a single if statement instead of nested if statements. So now it will tell us that we can do this uh, if I can type this instead and suddenly our code has been simplified it's now much more readable and we're not dealing with unnecessary nested things uh, code simplification can do much further as well I believe it can probably do nested for loops if you don't need you know multiple for loops or whatever um, but that's just one example of that and the other one TCH which is actually really nice uh, so if we import 
uh, typing and then say if well you know let's do just a def func and if we import if we have a date time uh, if we import date time like that and this is going to be a date time dot date time and then it's going to return none for example uh, and then we just print the date time dot date time as it is um, then we won't get the error at the moment because it's telling us that we uh, are not using the import so I'm just going to do type dot type checking and now it should I don't know why this isn't flagging it up actually have I, flagged, have I activated the wrong one yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm supposed to be printing DT here. <laughs> so now that we're not actually using the code, uh, we go up here and it's given us an error saying move standard library import date time into a type checking block. So what this means is that because we're only using it as a type hint annotation, we can actually move this in here so we don't import it at runtime. And that's, you know, as someone that uses these type checking blocks a lot, that is actually really, really useful. Um, to have because it just means that you're not importing unnecessary things at runtime meaning you know your code can be more efficient it's probably not going to make a huge difference um, but you know with python it is good to get every optimization you can get so those are just some examples of the things you can do in rough it has plenty more it's not fully flake complete it's not fully piling complete things are still being added but there are a lot of rules already in there and to see which ones you can use, you can do rough linter. And these are all the ones that have been ported over so far. Um, so the up is particularly useful. This is, um, so when you're, well, this is actually what the target version is used for primarily. So you can use this to see if there are any upgrades you can make to your code. So instead of doing, you know, dot update for dicts, um, you can use the merge operator, which I believe is faster. Someone correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I do believe it does something different under the hood. You have by doc star, which works for doc strings. You have pepe naming, which is naming conventions. Uh, Macabe, which is code complexity. You also have a lot of flake eight stuff. So flake eight prints, um, which confusingly is T20, uh, which is a funny one. You have longing formats, raising, so you have all these things and you have pylints and you have rough specific rules as well down here. You even have specialized ones for, you know, pandas and, you know, there's an umpy one up here somewhere. There's a load of different rules you can activate. Um, I actually have, I'll show you my configuration very quickly. So these are the ones that I have activated for a product of mine or a project of mine, sorry. As you can see, there is a lot of things that I have active and it doesn't slow it down at all. It's as fast to check all these things as it was when it was just checking ENF. And you can see I'm using extend select here, not select. So ENF are still being caught here. Though I should probably activate W as well, which activates the main warnings. And I have all these things down here um, to you know ignore certain errors. I will do another video at some point, whether that will be the next video, I don't know, uh, covering all the individual rules you can do at the moment and giving examples of each. Um, some of them I don't think are particularly useful, so whether I cover those, I don't know. Um, but hopefully that should have given you enough reason uh, and enough of an introduction to Rough uh, to really take it on board and implement it in your project because it's really not that difficult to add to your own projects at all, which is really nice. If you like this video at any point, then consider liking to let me know and also subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos like this. If you have any you know, comments or questions or you know things you want to see me do in future videos, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I read them all, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in one of two ways. The first of which is to become a channel member using the join button below. The second way is to become a patron user link in the description. One pound a month and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video for whatever we do next. I don't know what that might be. That might be these rough codes. I might do something else in between. Uh, we'll see. So I'll see you for that.